Um, the special members are, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to them in a minute. There's also, I'm going to be focusing almost entirely on C11. I'm assuming that doesn't bother anybody by now. I hope. It shouldn't. But if, just in case somebody has to use these things in C11 in any way, be aware that some things are slightly different. So before getting to actual um, to the actual special special members, uh, is, is, is special member functions, just a few key terms to get out of the way. A declaration. If somebody comes from background of a different language, different languages use this in different ways. A function declaration is the function signature. That's what the compiler has to see before we call the function. And, and when you, that's what's usually in the header files. You can have multiple declarations. The, 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 the declarations are where we do, you put the, the default parameters. Different declarations can have different parameters because they're not part of the actual signature. So that's the declaration. The definition is the actual function body. And obviously, every definition is also a declaration. Why is this important? Because some, 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 we're going to get a minute to, to deleted functions. Deleted functions have to be deleted in the first declaration. The first time a function is declared, even though a function can be declared multiple times, it can only be deleted the first time it's declared. So it's important to know the difference. Um, also, copies, if somebody's not aware, it's a shallow copy and a deep copy. It is, if an object holds either pointers or references to other objects, a shallow copy of the object just copies the pointer as is or copies the reference. It's still pointing or referring to the same object. As opposed to a deep copy, which copies the, the, the referenced object itself or the, the, the pointed to object. And basically, we end up with two equal but separate objects. We can change one without affecting the other. Question? Yes. 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 Copies of uh, reference the smart pointer, isn't it a bit? Uh, the smart pointer is an object. The smart pointer is, a, is a, an object, and the pointer two things are separate. It's not objects. exactly a shallow copy because you increment the ref count. It is not. In, but it's definitely not a deep copy. It is a. Deep. It is a deep copy because the the smart pointer is it's a separate is, is an object in its own right. And that's and that's the way I would look at it. I don't know. You have no copies. You are. You don't copy the actual object. No, but, but the smart pointer is the smart pointer is not meant to to actually know what it's pointing to. But what it's pointing to is not part of the object. It's what let's say a vector there in, in the container that the 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 heap that it's pointing to is part of the object. That the object is managing it. Smart pointer is only managing the pointer. It's not managing the pointed to object. Yeah, but it does manage the object lifetime and it manages the ref the, count. Yes. Okay. Again, a, a shell copy. Referring to shell pointer. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, shell pointer. Yeah, okay. so, I, I would call it a deep copy since the, sh the shell pointer, in my opinion, is not. It's only managing the lifetime of the object. Yeah, but then how do you differentiate that from the actual deep copy of the object on the heap? Yeah, it is so a copy of a, separate, of a separate separate object. But again, shell copy and deep copy are more convenience terms. Now, I mean, something might fall in between, like they, they, they're convenience terms that are actually hard to, they're not even defined in the standard or any way, they're for, for convenience. And to define rule, anytime I say in this talk rule or something should be done, I'm not referring, referring to actual C++ standard rule, standard definitions, but to suggestions, guidelines, best practices, everything. I don't think. There's a single thing here that is an actual enforced rule. It is all suggestions. Based on many people's experience, they are right anywhere between 90% to 99% of the time. But there's always exceptions. So and if somebody wants to use it, and it, it seems that my, the suggestions they bring are not the optimal solution or best solution for that case, that could very well be. Breaking the suggestions is not going to, it's still going to compile. They're not part of the language definition. A lot of them are taken from the C++ for guidelines. Whoever is not familiar with them, this is the link. They are a very long list of guidelines put together by people like, I don't know how to pronounce the name, uh, 
John Spurgeon. Yeah. Have you pronounced yeah. it? Beyondists. Yeah. And many other people that are on the International Supervisors Committee, they are considered very well tested practices. So a lot of the, a lot of the things are taken from there. Okay, C plus plus 11 brought us deleted functions. What are deleted functions for? Again, this is the last introduction, I think, before we get to actual the topic of the talk. And if, if we have a function, we want to prevent it from being called for whatever reason, we'll see a few in a minute. Then we, in the declaration, and only in the first declaration in that translation unit, we can define it as equals delete. Equals delete, as far as the compiler, that this is a definition. That is the body, of the, the body of the function. So in the first declaration, we can write equals delete, and then the function will not be, can't be used. This is, this is different than just not declaring the function at all. First of all, error catching will happen at compile time, which is a good thing, as opposed to if we, do, if we declare the function but don't define it, we will, it will only be called at link time. It is explicit, if we, if we don't declare the function at all, and we just assume that if somebody calls it, they're going to get an error, then all of a sudden somebody call, tries to call it, and call it and gets an error, you don't know, there's no way to, to tell just by, by looking if the error is in the caller for, for, for calling a function that shouldn't be called, or the error is in the, the library for forgetting to define the function. If we define it as deleted, right away you can see the function was, was purposely deleted, and the error is in the caller. And most important, deleted functions, since they are declared and, and defined, the definition is deleted, they participate in overload resolution. Which means that, that if, if the deleted function is a better match than a non-deleted function, the compiler will match the deleted function and will, and will warn about calling a deleted function. Even if a non-deleted function could theoretically match. And something that some people I noticed are not aware, delete does not Apply that only to special members, to constructors, destructors. A any function can be deleted. This could be useful, for instance, if we want to prevent a, a, an, an implicit conversion. If, for instance, if we have a function foo, foo bool, and we want to prevent it being called with int, if we didn't have this, if we called it with int, it would be implicitly conver converted to a bool, and, foo would, and it would compile. We can, if we delete foo int, like we said, it participates in overload resolution. This is now a better match. And foo int will not compile. <coughs> Another use for it is if we have a, a derived class and a non-virtual function, and we want to we, we want to actually delete the function for whatever reason from the derived class. We don't want it to exist. If we define it as deleted, if somebody tries calling it, the, since the compile since it is part of the overload resolution, the compiler will match the one in derived since there, there's a definition in derived and it's deleted and it will compile. So it's actually hiding the function in that case. It is, and it, just like if I had info and I actually gave a, a body of a function here that would hide this function, it's the exact same thing except it's deleted. It's better than hiding because hiding would still allow you to find uh, an, an alternate in another place, whereas this actually forbids this usage. No, the, the derived one uh, hides the base. Yeah. If you cast to the base and call foo, if you cast to the base and call foo, you will get this foo. Yeah. Okay, special number functions. What are they? I'm sure everybody's familiar with them. Maybe just now with, with the name. They are the member functions that are uh, that the compiler will all, will all automatically generate a declaration and sometimes even a definition for, if under certain conditions, which we will see. The most obvious condition is that there is no user declaration of them. These are the default constructor, copy constructor, the move constructor, copy move assignment, and a destructor. If these are, are not declared by the, by the user under certain circumstances, the compiler will declare them and also define them. So, the, so, okay, so before we get into implementing the, the special number functions ourselves, what happens if we don't implement them? We rely on the default. That the compiler from the compiler, all these special member functions. First of all, they will only be declared, like we said, if there's no user declaration. They will only be defined if 
if they were declared based on the previous rule, and if possible. For instance, if we have a default constructor, and, and when we have a member of the class that doesn't have a default constructor, the default, construct, the, the default constructor, which should be calling the, the default constructor of every member, can't do, can't do that, and therefore it won't, be, it, won't be, it won't be defined by the compiler. There's no error. If the compiler can't, can't define it, it won't. There's no error involved, unless we try to call it. Um, it can be forced to be defined using equals default. Equals default unlink equals delete only works on special number functions. And it, and it doesn't actually, it doesn't, doing equals default doesn't actually force a, an actual definition. Using equals default just says that if the, fun, if the special number function would have not been declared because there is a similar function that is user declared, then, then now it will be declared. But if it, it can't be, if it can't be defined, like we said, for instance, there's no default constructor on one of the members, then equals default basically says, do the thing, same thing you would have done otherwise, which is make it deleted. So, so if a function, a, default, a special number function would have been deleted, if I do equals default, there's no error, and the it is still deleted. And of course, in cases where it is being defined by the by the compiler and I want it to not be, I can do equals delete just like any other function. Also, the special number functions, what do they actually do? What is their, 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 what does their function body look like? They will perform their operation, whether it's default construction, move construction, copy, assignment, destruction, on all the base classes and all the members of the class in initialization order. So for instance, if we have a class like this, the default constructor will default construct animal, then, then trained, and then aged. I think it's in definition order. No, it's in declaration. Well, declaration. Order. Initialization order. No, no, that's what I said. No, the, the initialization. Uh, if it uh, sounds to me more like the init list in the constructor. But the, 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 no, the, 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 the init list in the constructor. It does is. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't it's initialize in that order. It initializes exactly. In the order. So this is that, the, this is the, the order they are initialized. The order is the same. This is the order they are initialized. Yeah, but I think it's clear. It's a, maybe yes, it's more, I, I thought this is actually a bit more clear, but they're equivalent. The two things are okay. initialization and... We're saying the same thing. Yes. And of course, and same goes for all the other ones, except of course the, the, the destructor, which will destruct them in reverse order. It will destruct, call the, the destructor of age, then train, then animal. Um, all the default special number functions are public. If we want them to not be public, we have to declare them ourselves and under private or protect or whatever. They are all inline. They are not virtual, especially important for the, for the destructor. Uh, I think the inline part is wrong. I just read something a few days ago. There are cases in which something cannot compile if implemented in the header. In such a case, you need to write equals default in the CPP file. Uh, that's that's a virtual yeah. structure. Uh, it's a virtual. If you use a class which is only forward declared in the header, and you have okay. a yeah. yeah. You can use default default uh, uh, public class. You, you can use equals default to make it to make it private or protected. You declare it under protected. Do equals default. That's fine. But if you don't declare it at all, you just rely on the compiler to declare it. It will be I mean, public and will declare it without equals default in the header, and then. Implement it as an with an empty body and with equals default in the CDP. I think that is it sounds familiar. I think that's for for purely that's for, for pure virtual destructors. Pure, virtual. Pure, pure virtual destructors are like that. Or if you need to uh, allocate a pointer for each, uh, uh, where the, you only see the full implementation of the class uh, in the CDP, you don't want to include the header from the file. Uh, Okay, but and if they are not again the default, if they are not declared at all in any way, they will be non-virtual and inline. And by the way, that there's also another reason you might change your mind from default implementation to some actual implementation, and in such a case, you don't need to change the header file and close the full uh, compilation. Okay. Okay. 
And then, again, from my experience, which is not <coughs> fast, because it default, seems unlikely that you will change your mind. Default, 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 delete is uh, basically an implementation detail. You don't need to expose it in the header. It is not only an implementation detail, because it makes a difference to the user. We'll see in a minute the next. Unless you are interested in having them implemented inline, sometimes you're not. I know, but it actually makes a difference to the user whether they're defaulted or not. And, and it makes a difference if they're defaulted in the header, in, in the class definition. We'll see, we'll see them when we get the trivial. If they're defaulted in the class definition, they're trivial. If they're out of class definition, they're not trivial, and that makes a difference to, to the user of the class. There will be no except as appropriate, which basically means the compiler will do a best effort to make the no except, but depending on, taking through the example of, let's say, the default, the, the default constructor, if if there are any if there are any no ex, uh, any um, no except um, conditions on any of the base classes or members, then the no except on the default constructor will be the aggregation of all of those. If they are all no except, then it will also be no except. So if you want to change that, you need to write the one. If you want to change, function. yes. But and why would you want it to be not not no except if it can be no except? No, no, the other way around. If it is, you know, if one of the drivers uh, and you want to force it to be no yeah. except, then you, then you have to write the declaration yourself. You can still write equals default again, and you, you can we'll see. You can put a user declaration and, and then do equals default, and that's fine in some cases. Const express expert the same the same thing. It will make a best effort to make a const expert, and they are trivial if appropriate. Again, being if appropriate. If all the ones that all the, the the ones that it's calling are trivial, it itself will be trivial only if it is defaulted in the in the actual uh, class definition. If it is defaulted even in the header file after the class definition, it will not be trivial. What is trivial in this case? Trivial is in there, there is a, in the in the type trace. There is, is is trivial is trivial. The constructor constructible is trivial movable. Trivial basically in, in unofficial terms means that it's, it's what used to be called a POD. Uh, plain old data in C11, they refined it, they split it into trivial and I forgot what the other thing is called. No, it, what used to be POD it consisted of two separate, two se two separate uh, ideas. One was trivial, one was I forgot what the other one is. Tri trivial basically means that, it can, that you can be copied by, with, with mem copy. And if a, if a class is trivial, for instance, if you if you if you if you call S to be copy on a trivial, it will just do a simple mem copy. Why would this make a difference? You said it uh, it can't be trivial if it's implemented in in a NSCP file. Yes. How does it affect mem copy? Because it's if it's safety. if it is if it is not implemented in the header, then again the then. Then the compiler has no way of knowing that it is trivial. The compiler doesn't know what's in the constructor or in the destructor and whatever it is. So again, if I'm calling std copy, if I if I make a vector of dog in this case, the the when I I, I only have to have this part. I don't actually have to have the implementation in the same translation unit. And then vector could be calling std copy, and all it has is the declaration of the, of the, the definition of the class without the functions, then there's no way for the compiler to know which overload to use. If you think about it, in those cases that I mentioned where you must put it in the CPP file so as to, uh, because only there the compiler has full information, then in any case, it wouldn't have all the required information to determine if the set is... Uh, and, then, and then it will not be trivial. Mm -hmm. And it's only trivial if it is, if it is, if it is defaulted, and uh, even, even if it is Defined by the user to be exactly the same thing. I declare a, a I define let's say a copy a, a default constructor with an, with empty with an empty function body. It does the exact same thing. It is not trivial. As Why, soon, not? Why not? Because the compiler doesn't actually look at the fun, at the function body. It all it looks as if the compiler if the compiler uh, generates the function body itself. It knows it's trivial. Otherwise. It has to start figuring out what's going on. It doesn't do that. And in, usually, in most cases, it does the right thing, and you don't have to think about it, except for, of course, when it doesn't, which happens. Okay, and I, are you 
Right now we're talking about the, def the, well, the default implementations. When we get to the user implementations, we'll get to that. The default copy function it needs special attention. It has a few more rules than the other. The default, the, the copy construct and copy assignment operator have a few more rules than the other four special ones. First of all, they will perform a shallow, shallow copy, which is important to, to pay attention to. If there are any pointers or references, it will not dereference them before it copies. It will just copy the pointer of the reference. So right away, of course, we see the first case where we have to implement the, 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 the special functions ourselves if we wanted to do, to do a deep copy. I don't think references are copyable. No, in a constructor. A copy constructor can, can, can copy references. Copy assignment can. Yeah, but not copy member references. Okay. Members that are references. Like if train there was a reference to rule, or age was a reference yeah, to end. But neither train or age will be in themselves references. They can be references. Of course, if you have references here, you won't have a default constructor because the default constructor, because the references have to be initialized during construction. But, so you won't have a default constructor, but you'll have to supply a constructor that initializes the references. And but a, a copy constructor can work just fine with references, but we'll do a shallow copy. If we want a deep copy, we have to define the copy constructor ourselves. A copy assignment, of course, can copy references, but the same applies to pointers. The copy functions are implicit, which means that, and which is basically you, what you always want for a copy function. I can't think of a case where you wouldn't, but if somebody has a case where they want it to be explicit, the default functions will not work since they are implicit. Again, you can define them as explicit equals default. What's the point of making a copy constructor explicit? I, I, I can't think of a case where you would want to explicit, but be aware that it is implicit if somebody has such a case. I don't know why. But. And these copy constructors and copy assignment operators, of course, can, there is not one single way to declare them. There's the common way, which is with the const ref. And the default will try to do a const ref. But if it can't do a const, a const ref, because, um, why would it be able to do a const ref? Because the base class is not const ref. Right. All one of the members is not const ref. Yes, sure. right? Then it will revert to a non-const, which is still a copy constructor. It's the, the, the less commonly used form of it. Then it was more like a rule. You can change the source object. You can change the source object, but it doesn't bind to R values. A construct can bind to R values, and therefore, if you don't have a, if the, if the, the copy isn't doing anything serious, you don't have to define a move because the copy does the same yeah, thing. You can change the state of the source object, which is quite surprising. You can change. It. That's why construct is what's usually used. But again, a, a any any constructor that that takes a reference to CV qualified type of class is a copy constructor. Um, I don't think anybody uses volatile, but this also implies that you will not be the default copy constructor won't be able to bind to a volatile since it's either const or plain ref. Um, yeah, so I was going to have a slide now about all the uh, big complicated flowchart of which functions depend on uh, which functions and then I found this online which is much nicer. So thank you to this guy. Um, the, the default, the default uh, functions will be declared and defined depending on which user, which user functions are declared. Um, so if, if nothing is declared, that's the most obvious case. They will all be declared. They will all be declared and defined. If it, and as we can see, the default constructor basically depends on constructors. If there's any constructor at all, the default constructor will not be declared automatically. We can default it. And the important thing to see in this table, which I'm sure most people are aware, is this whole big block of the yellows. The yellow ones were pre C++ 11 
they were a less, uh, a yes, that means that the copy constructor and, and, and copy assignment operator were, were defined by default, if, even if there was a destructor or if the other one existed. C++11, this was, it's still less like that, but it was, it is now deprecated. So in C++20, as far as I know, it is still deprecated, but it will probably eventually be changed. So best to not rely on this and to always, if we want them to, to manually declare them as, as uh, defaulted, and if we don't want them, then declare them as deleted. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna refer to these yellow yeses also as no's, since that is what they will be in the future. So this whole big square here, this block, that says if any of these four, these five, uh, special members are user declared, all the rest will not be defaulted. Which, of course, brings us to the famous rule of three, rule of five, we'll get to them in a minute, which says that if we declare one of them, we have to declare all of them. Since as soon as we declare one, all the others disappear. What's the difference between no and the no means that it is not even declared. It will not. It won't be part of uh, overload resolution. It doesn't. Deleted is declared and deleted, which means it will be part of overload resolution, and you won't be able to call it. Um, so yes. So besides the obvious reason that if you wait, let's say you get a different compilation error. You'll get a different compilation. If you define a move, a move operator. And, and you try to call it a copy operator, you will get a uh, compilation error, this function is deleted. A very, a very nice one. If you didn't declare it, right? If you didn't declare it. If you didn't declare it, by default it's deleted, you'll get a very nice error, error saying the function is deleted. Most compilers that, that I know will even tell you it is deleted because you have a move function online so and so. As opposed to if you have a copy constructor and try to call, and call it with an R value, then it will just go to the copy constructor because this is not part of the overload resolution, resolution at all. Okay, so the user defined special members, assuming we need to define them, then as we said, we should probably need to define all or most of them. So they are basically broadly, in, not an official definition, there are four kinds of types. Regular, non-owning, std span, std complex, int, bool, any class that doesn't have an object that it has to manage the lifetime of, they will probably not be, the default special members will probably be just fine. <coughs> Don't need to define any of them. An owning class, such as std vector or any of the, any of the, of the standard containers, they will probably need all or some of the special members to be user defined because obviously they need a a a a deleter a, a deleter to delete the to, to delete the a destructor. I'm sorry to delete the 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 object that it's that it's managing and in in this in this category it's usually objects that are on the heap. And therefore, they will, you can copy them. You would just have to do a deep copy, so you have to define the copy constructors. You might want to define the move because it's usually cheaper. So some or all of the special members will need to be user defined. A move only, such as unique PTR. This is, in the case of unique PTR, it is managing the pointer itself as opposed to what it is pointing to. Um, or, or this could be a, a a, uh, a lock, a mutex, anything that, it's usually anything that's managing an external resource. Again, that's a very general term, but, so this can usually, you have no problem moving it, because you still have only the one reference, or the one point, or whatever it is, the one handle, but you will not be able to copy it because it's an, usually an external resource, and you can only ha hold one handle thing, or most of them, you can, hold the, you can copy the handle theoretically, but you don't want to call the destructor on it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And last is objects that are part of a hierarchy, such as iOS base or anything that is, they are sort of a special case. We'll briefly touch on them and then we'll ignore them for the rest of this talk. Non-owning and owning are sometimes called, 
for instance, in the C++ guidelines. Regular object. Regular just means that it behaves like an int. If you have object A and you assign it to object B or you copy it to object B, A and B are now equal to each other. You can compare them, and they are also separate from each other. As opposed to owning and move only are called managers or resource managers. They will need a destructor because they manage some object, some pointer, some handle, whatever. Man uh, uh, being a manager is not is not or should, shouldn't be. If so, everybody implements things correctly, it shouldn't be trans 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 transitive. Is that it? Transitive. 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 Right. Basically, if if I if I'm a class and I have a member that is an owning an owning an, an owning a, an owning object, for instance, I have an SD director, that doesn't prevent me from being non-owning, since the the assuming RTTI is done correctly, as it is in all the standard containers, that that object is now completely copyable without any problem. It manages its own memory. It will delete itself. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't have to define any of the functions. So you can be a regular and manager. It go and only. And yeah, regular is both a regular object and a manager. Regular it just means that again that 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 you can do all the regular operations in it. You can assign it. You can copy it. You can move it. And A will equal B, and A will be separate from B, just like any of the standard built-in types. Okay. Um. You said we'll touch briefly on the, on the hierarchies. If we have a base class. This used to be enough for, uh, this used to be enough, if, assuming it's not a, a manager, it's, then all I needed was to define the destructor as virtual, and so that I don't end up with object slicing or partially destructed objects, and that would be enough. But as we saw in that big table, starting C++ 11, as soon as I define a destructor, the copy, uh, the copy operations are the default copy operations are deprecated, so I can't rely on them anymore. So starting C++11, we don't want to rely on them. I would have to make default them and force them to be defined. What if you define the destructor with equals default? So it, since it's virtual, it, it, that, that will work. It will do the same thing, but it's it's still it, that also it, it's still the, used, uh, it's still user declared. Also deletes the uh, yes the because errors. if I do equals default on something. Basically, I have a user declaration and a, a default definition. And what matters is the declaration. If there is a declaration of a, of any, of a destructor, they will not be declared. If there's a user declaration. So I have to default the copy operations, which until now I got for free. And of course, since this is a constructor, I now lose the, the default constructor, and I have to default that one myself. And um, this, is the rule of three. this is not the rule of three. This is the rule of hierarchies. Okay. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of course, then you would not usually actually want to do this because if you have copy operations in the base, you can end up with, if, if they are not virtual, you can make them virtual, I suppose. Or if they're not virtual, you will probably want to delete them so you don't end up with object slicing. And if you actually want to do a copy, maybe implement a copy function. That's, that's it about hierarchies. So now, in going back to our types, our managing types, where we actually have to define the operations, I'm going to separate the constructor, the default constructor, from the other five. Since, as we saw, the other five are all linked together, since they all affect the the they all affect the, the managed object. They will copy or not copy or move the managed object, and the destructor will end up with two. They are all, the default constructor is completely separate from them. It doesn't have any effect. That, so there could be cases where you only need, when you need the default constructor and you don't need the other five. There probably won't be cases where you only need the other five and not the default constructor, but it's separate. Any constructor that can have zero parameters is a default constructor, even if it has more parameters, if they have default values. It is a default constructor. Every class should have a default constructor. That is a good guideline. A lot of a lot of the algorithms and in, in the in the standard li library rely on having a default constructor. They not, rely not only on having it, but they rely on it being no except often. And 
the, the assumption in a lot of cases is that the default constructor just really does nothing, just puts a bunch of zeros and null pointers or whatever it takes. Simple, cheap, quick. Some of the, the code we'll see, we'll, see, we'll see soon relies on this being, being the case and, and therefore ca cause the default constructor to, to make an object that we're just going to delete right away afterwards because we're assuming it's cheap. Um, should always be, be defined, like we said. Default is, also, is a definition, and it's a very good one usually because it makes it trivial. Um, should avoid in, 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 in initialization this if possible. C++ 11 brought us um, in-class initialization. We can now do that. I don't know. Well, we can now do if we have ints or or strings or basically anything. We can we can initialize it in line in its in, in the in the variable declaration in the class. Complex objects too. Complex uh, any any with braces. Any and there that avoids the initially having an initialization. This avoids having to define the default constructor at all. And even if we define it, it is much shorter since it avoids initialization. Okay, the rule of three, which I'm sure many people have heard of, now we're going to get to, as we said, the other five, which are all grouped together. So this is the old rule of three, pre C++ 11, and it is still partially true, as we'll see. The rule said, if a class needs to declare a destructor, a copy constructor, or a copy assignment, it needs to declare all three. Since if it has to declare any one of them, it is probably managing a handle, pointer, whatever, whatever it is, and copying such an object, and it, it, will, it releases it in the destructor, and if, if we rely on the default, the default copy operations, we will end up double deleting, or double freeing, or double whatever the appropriate verb is. So let's say we have a class, cyclic buffer, size, head, tail, and the data, as we see inline initialization for everything. Then we have our default constructor, which is very simple. A, 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 another constructor to actually initialize it with some things. Of course, we have to define a, a, a destructor to delete the pointer. And following the rule of three, we would need a copy constructor, which is often very trivial to implement. It's just copy, cop excuse me, copy, 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 copy. And do a deep copy. If, assuming, assuming that's what we want, a deep copy, that would be in the, in the body. So this part is trivial. Then we, when we get to the copy, the copy assignment. assignment, things get a little more interesting. The copy assignment seems to be trivial. Same as the copy constructor. Copy all the, data, all, all the things, delete the old data, declare a new one, and std copy the data over. Seems simple, but what about self-assignment? If we have an object A, a type cyclic buffer, and we do A equals A, of course we're going to come into we're going to enter this function. We are going to delete the data, and then we're going to try to copy from other other that data, which is the same pointer. We should check the double. So we have to put, put a check for self-assignment. What about exception safety? If, for instance, new Throws using an exception. What? We're using new and delete. Yes, and uh, new and delete because, and obviously, when you use new and delete, you use a, a smart pointer, a unique pointer, you, a, a, in, in such a case, or, or just use a vector, depending on, on, on your use case. But new and delete are your placeholders for assuming um, it, it could be a GDI object, a Windows handle object, a, a Linux uh, file, file, file descriptor, anything that needs to be, that I need to manage its lifetime. So again, these are placeholders since they are easiest to use. They're built in, and everybody knows what they do. Probably in 10 years, nobody will know what they do, but right now everybody knows what they do. What about exception safety? As we said, this is not exception safe at all. If new throws, we are left with data deleted and still not, it, it is not, it, it's still holding a pointer. And this object in, in, the, in its destructor will try to delete data again, well, double deletion. OK, so self-assignment, we can put in, if, if this is only if this is different than other, then do this whole thing. Self-self-assignment. And 
if we, as soon as we delete data, we assign it to zero, to, to null, then this is now, this is now um, exception safe, since if new throws are copied throws, we will not end up with a double deletion. But it's much better to, I don't know if you want to about it, it's much better to just uh, copy the data to all data to allocate, because then I have a transaction. Now I delete it and I don't have the new buffer yet, so I lost the old data. We're going to get an answer. Okay. This is the so this seems a little bit better, but we're still paying on every call to the to the operator. We're paying. We're paying for for this check. Yeah. For if you check for self assignment, which is usually a very rare case. True that in our modern CPUs, the the, the the branch predictor will will since this will almost always enter, the branch predictor will save us most of it. But still, there is. The, 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 there is a little bit of overhead, and if the self assignment isn't as rare in in your code, then the branch predictor might even miss it. And it's also just ugly and hard to remember. And this also is only basic basic exception safety, as was uh, mentioned. The exception safety has different levels. Basic exception safety just means that that if an exception is thrown, it will not crash. Everything will still be in a, in a consistent state. I will be able to call the destructor and nothing bad will happen. But I cannot keep using this object because, and, and we would prefer to have strong exception safety, which means that either everything was changed or nothing was changed. If an exception was thrown, the, the object either was changed or not changed, but it is not in any between state. And probably the, the worst is most of this code we just did in the copy constructor. We, and and, and I mean, this happens to be short, relatively four lines, five lines. If your class is bigger, re repeating yourself is a good way to forget. And then you add a member, and you remember to add it in the in the in the assignment operator, but not in the copy constructor or the other way. Everybody hates code duplication. So then we have the rule of three and a half, known as copy and swap. If we add a non throwing swap method, which is, by the way, also CPP guidelines recommended for whenever possible to have a non throwing swap. Implementing it is mostly boilerplate, using STD swap, and then just swap every member. Assuming that all these swaps are no except, which, yeah, as we said, they should be, this swap will be no except. And it's not copy paste boilerplate, but it's the, 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 there's nothing to think about. It just swaps, 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 swap, swaps all the way down. Um, just for context, no except does not actually mean that the function doesn't throw exceptions. Contrary to the popular belief, no except just means that if the function does throw an exception, I'm all right with calling std terminate. Do you, and it is, it is no, it's well defined. Oh, yeah. It's very, very well defined behavior. If, the, if a no except function throws an exception, it's a very well defined. std terminate is called. And it's also the default for destructors and C++. No except, right, destructors don't have to be defined as no except. They are no except by default. All other functions need to be defined as no except. But again, putting no except here, I don't actually have to know if these are no except. I assume they are. But even if they weren't, as far as I'm concerned, if any of these throw, Calling us to determine is, is perfectly fine. I, I, I don't want to continue in such a state. Most cases, um, in, I don't know, most, most cases that I'm aware of, I'm sure people have different experiences, if an exception is thrown, then I, I don't really want to handle it. If an exception is thrown, I would rather die with an, with an error message. Not quite. Again, I'm, I'm sure people have different experiences. But just to be aware, no except does not mean that the function can't throw. It means that if the function throws, I don't want to continue. I don't want to handle it. Therefore, you assume that it won't throw. But code generation. No, it's again, if, if, if it's it, I can have a no, a no except function that calls new. New is the, can throw in, in, in most things, depending on the operating system. Some, but theoretically, new can throw. By, according to the standard, new can throw. I can still have a no except because if I try to allocate memory and I can't allocate memory, I don't really have anything to do. Yeah, but well, what I mean is you don't need to consider the case where this would throw because there's nothing you can do about it. It's going to crash anyway. Right. So you can just go ahead and assume 
Right, which is what I do. That does more than just uh, the, the next slide. That does more than just the operator equal because now we are also uh, touching the other object. It is not cost. No, I am not because I'm taking it by value. Ah, and, and remove the reference here, which is the important part. Now the this is completely boilerplate. Anytime we're going to implement copy and swap, these four lines are all that the operator, the, the copy assignment operator takes. The magic is, of course, now that we have a, a non-throwing swap, we we are using all the code that we already wrote in the copy constructor. The operator it takes it by value, which makes the copy calls the copy constructor into other. By the time we enter the function, all the, uh, all the, all the, all the all, everything was already copied. If anything so was going to the two pointers to the second secret buffer. Point you have two pointers to the second buffer, and then you assign by one of them. Assign, and, and pointers in second buffer, two second buffer? Two the second second buffer. Yes. I have two pointers to it. Yes. And, now I assign by, uh, by one of them. Yes. The, first, the other one will still point to the old one that I was not assigning. You, you, you assign the pointer or you assign the dereference pointer? The dereference pointer. No, then it changes the object itself. No, no. I have, assigned, I have to assign the buffers and one of them I have two pointers to it. Yes. Now I assign the other one to the first one that has two, two pointers to it. I'm not sure how, yes. Let, let's take it offline. Okay. Because because you're not assigning to the same object. I am. I, that's... Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes. 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 So, uh, let's just explain how this works. Single block or other will will use the copy constructor to to construct this other. By the time we enter the function, everything was was already. Copied, uh, allocated, whatever is needed. So now all we have to do is swap, which is no accept, and return this. But still, isn't this very expensive? No. You, you copy everything inside swap, and you have an extra copy here. No, swap, swap, swap doesn't copy. Swap doesn't copy. Swap swaps. Swap. You basically yeah, move in the same copy. Because everything is copied twice. No. Swap again. Every, after using the default no, effort. After using the default SDD swap, first of all it doesn't move. It does three moves, not a copy. Mm -hmm. And and, just and and if it is not the default if you implement swap. Go back a second. No optimal so you can only move. Really 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 yeah, yeah. So, and you can only move if the object itself can move, you know? If yeah. the data can move, then it can move. Yes, if the data can move, chances are the copy is cheap. Not always. Again, this is not, like I said, this, this is true in 90, 95% of the cases. If, if one of your, your members is, for instance, a very big struct with lots of ints or an a, a, a STD array or any such object that swapping it is relatively expensive, this will be more. This will be expensive. Where am I going? Okay. This will be expensive. But assuming that your swap is cheap, then th this becomes cheap too. This will, depending on context, and it may be, it, it, it will either call the copy uh, for, for now. It will call the copy constructor, make all the necessary copies, and then swap it with this. So other now other now has the state that this was holding before. When when the, when this function exits, other is 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 destroyed. The destructor is called on whatever we were holding, and no memory is leaked. Does the compiler implement the uh, self assignment uh, check if you do the default implementation? Yes. No, the default implementation doesn't need it because the default implementation does a shallow copy. Because I mean the default implementation of the assignment operator. Yeah, if you do equals default, mm -hmm. it does a shallow copy. A shallow copy doesn't doesn't have to worry about self assignment since it doesn't delete anything. It doesn't release anything. Self assignment is a problem when you release before reallocating or before copying. Since it does a shallow copy, it doesn't release anything. 
If for some reason I would inherit cyclic buffer, I must continue with that specific signature, right? Because otherwise one won't call the other. You, not, um, you can have another one and then you'll have two functions and the, and the, and the, and the best overload will be chosen. Like I said, hierarchies and special functions don't mix well, they're, they're their own. What I meant to say is that if let's say I would uh, inherit a cyclic buffer, Right. Okay. Then but you have a hierarchy. Yeah. Hierarchies then, are. Yeah, just a second. Yes. X would have an operator equal to in. Yes. Okay. I must obey the same, the same signature of that specific function because I can't say that in X I would have a const X reference because otherwise it won't be able to use the other one, the other operator. No, it won't be able to use this one anyway. If you inherit from cyclic wrapper, the this is first of all this is not virtual, yeah, and also this doesn't take a point of a reference, so this is not not uh, polymorphic. This will not be able to take a base uh, derived. Would it be cheaper to go the other way? If I okay. yeah. if I if I call if I have something derived a derived cyclic wrapper, and I have a derived cyclic wrapper A equals B. That's a problem. It's one C. No, it no, it, 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 it won't, it won't, um, the, the overload won't choose this one. If, yeah. if I call it, if I tell it equals a derived, you cannot, a derived will not go into this, and it's, it's not really more. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to call it. What? Because it, since it's not a point of reference, it's not. Oh, this is the same thing. Can't be the same. But you can do it the other way. Yeah. You can call the the operator, the equal operator in the copy constructor. You can no. You can't call the equal operator in the copy constructor? Why? In the if in the copy constructor I'll, I'll use the default constructor and then call the, the assignment operator. Then I don't have so many swaps, and you said that normally the you don't have is very cheap. So again, if you have, if you, oh, you if you put all the code over here, yeah. Well, first of all, then you have to worry about self assignment and about exception safety, like we said, which over here you get for free. Yeah. But then it's not cheaper even for uh, for non cheap moves. Well, you don't, we didn't get the moves yet, but we didn't get the moves. Swap. Well, no, that swap does move. Yes. So if I have uh, structs with a lot of things, yes. I don't have to care, to care about it because I'll uh, default initialize them in the copy constructor. But it's the same as moving. You know, I think if if no. like a, if yeah. a lot moving is the same as moving. If a lot of these functions like swap and the constructor are no. in no. the the optimizer will basically. A lot of them will be aligned. A, a, a lot of things will, will have. No, it will simply disappear. You get a copy construction into the. Into the yeah, they, in, again, depending on how it's used, a lot of times you'll end up with, with copy elision. And, yeah. And, and you'll just say that anyway, but I don't understand the, how to do it the other way. Let's. Uh, okay. Um, we get self assignment protection for free since we make a copy before. Swapping, if, even if we don't do self assignment, we will make a copy of the object and we are now swapping two separate objects, not the same object. But, uh, but of course, if, it's, if there's no self assignment, we're not paying anything for it. Strong, strong exception safety, since as we said, this is <coughs> completely no accept. Um, all, the, all the allocations are done before changing this object at all. We have, and, and the changing is no, is no accept. We have strong exception safety. And there's no code duplication. What? Many people bother about putting a no accept on this because it, the no accept here is a bit of a line because the exception can come uh, in the, the copy. Color, the color it can come in the copy. From the copy. The copy can so no exception. Color, Again, when, when the caller see no accept, I agree. They, no accept here is optional. If, if it is no accept, or if yeah. you want if you want the no accept semantics, you can put no accept. Yeah, and, yeah. It's, it's and, then, and then you can uh, declare uh, moves in the assignment operator as no accept <coughs> because you have only this 
assignment operator for both coffee and boom. Didn't get to move so, yet. Okay. 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 Everybody keeps asking. C plus plus eleven moves on index. So if we wanted to add move, it is as simple as a move constructor. Move constructors are also recommended to always be no except, since, for instance, things like std vector um, will only actually use the move constructor if it is no except. Otherwise, it can't guarantee strong type safety, strong exception safety. So this is again completely boilerplate. Copy and paste these three lines. How does it work? We use the default constructor, which we said is cheap, just make everything empty. And then we just swap this, which is default constructed, into our R value reference. We are now all what was before the, the, the temporary. The temporary now holds a default constructed object and will be destructed, no problems. And we also get for free in in a, a, a move assignment. Since the move assignment operator that we wrote over here took by value, if we pass it an R value, it will be moved into other and continue as usual. This doubles as a move assignment. Yes. Very nice. But, but, um, but you pay you pay here if you have the same object, then you are doing things that you could you now avoid. Yes. But the, 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 yeah, the, 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 the assumption is that self assignment is rare. The CPU itself is yeah, runtime and we'll apply the copy to self, basically. The assumption in using this idiom is that self-assignment is weird. If somebody's use case is different, this might not be the best, the best fit. And move operations should also always be no except, like you said, in, otherwise the, the standard library just doesn't use it. We can find it and then we make a very nice move constructor and it's completely ignored. So this is, in the end, the class we ended up with. If anybody wants to bother reading the whole thing, we went through all of it. The only thing is, as, as we said here, if, we, if, if this is not no except, then we will have to define a separate, exactly the same thing, uh, equals operator for a, 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 a move, move assignment that will have to take by our value and will be no except. So the new, an improved rule of zero, three, four, five, six and a half, some number. If there is no resource management because everything is either plain old data, trivial, or it is an RTTI manager, we don't have to define any of the functions. We don't have to declare any of the functions. If we are managing something, but there is no advantage to moving, it can happen, I don't know when, I'm sure it can, then we only need to define the original rule of three, well, as a, plus the swap. As we saw, this one is completely boilerplate. So we basically only have to, only have to think about these two. If it is non-copyable, it is managing a, a GDI handle or whatever, then, then I'm obviously the destructor, we need the move constructor and move assignment, move assignment Again, if we use if a move assignment, we can do the same thing. Use swap and, and the boilerplate move assignment and the boilerplate move constructor. There's almost nothing to think about, and the copy constructor and copy assignment are automatically deleted. We don't even have to manually delete them. And if an object is copyable and movable, for instance, any of the any of the any of the standard um, the standard template containers, we need to define. Theoretically, all five, but since like we saw, if the copy assignment is no except, it can double as a move assignment, then we actually only have to define four plus the swap, and these are boilerplate, but we have to think only about these two. Um, what does this have to do with RTTI? Is it possible you meant RAAI? Yes, I did, I'm sorry. RAAI. Another, uh, yes. This is very easy to implement, very easy to get right, since most of the functions are three or four lines long boilerplate. There is two, only two functions that actually have to be thought about. 
And it's good enough for 99% or 95% or 90%, you can stick whatever number you want in here. <laughs> and um, it is near optimal performance in most cases. As you said, there are cases where it is far from optimal. Though, if you consider a copy elision, and C++ everything for is guaranteed copy elision, it, even in those cases, it will often become near optimal. If you need to use this in really, really tight code and a tight loop, it is never quite optimal. If you do the copy assignment the hard way, chances are you, and you, you will save a little bit of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of copying, or another case where it's not optimal is if there's a lot of assignment, uh, same size, if there's a lot, a lot of copying of same size, same size um, containers, then, and, Theoretically, if I know that, oh, yeah, that all my, most of my assignments are the same size, I can reuse the same data, the same, the same heap or whatever I'm using, and that will, that will probably be much more optimal. Thank you.